so here's this word now on Scott. And here's what I remember first thing about seeing you at the Jackson Center. Okay. Aaron Beckwith. Aaron Beckwith, you would bring down students from Bemis Point mm -hmm. schools to play uh, a song. Yeah, the drum bass, African yeah. drums. Yep, yeah. the African drums, and you did that for a few years, and you were always the leader of the pack. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that's your first time, but that's the first time I, I quickly drew memory of you interspersing with programming there. Okay. Um, I think I was on the, uh, the committee, though, the education committee Did before you? that. Okay. And I think that's how I, I, I heard about Aaron Beckwith, and I said, hey, I, we've got the African drums, we can do... Um, but your memory might be better than mine, because I, I, I didn't know. I know I spent 15 years, and uh, yeah, Aaron Beckwith, <coughs> he was very proud of his uh, award. It was the award for uh, Follow the Drinking Gourd uh, show. He got a what, a TV Emmy? Is that what it was? Yep. Yeah. It was Follow the North Star was the Follow name the of the program. Star. But you had that gourd. Uh, yeah, Follow the Drinking Gourd was a song that uh, Pete Seeger made famous. Yeah. And so we, we played that to uh, drums. Yeah. Yeah, he liked that. Great guy. And what I remember about Aaron Beckwith, because half of this is when he got <coughs> done with his programs, he'd take Q&A. Yeah. And then he said, most of you need to go downstairs in the basement mm -hmm. and see the Underground Railroad tunnel. No. Oh. And that caused chaos. Yeah. So we weren't ready for that. <laughs> and I, I don't think I joined that chaos <laughs> when he said that. But I continued seeing him at the, at the institution. That was a fun and that was his life, his love. was yeah. the Chautauqua. Yeah. So what did you know about Jackson beforehand? What kind of drew you to the education committee? <clears throat> well, I, you know, I, I thought about that and uh, I really didn't know a lot about Robert H. Jackson. Uh, I knew that you had an educational committee. I knew you were selecting books for uh, students to read. And I was big in whole language and authors. And that, I think, was the genesis of me asking, to, can I, I think I called up and said, you know, can I be on your committee? And you said yes. It was quite an honor to, to sit on that committee and make selections of books. Uh, what would be the book of the, of the year? Do you remember our first book was Jerry Spinelli? Sure. And yeah. Milkweed mm. was the book. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you, through that process, I don't know, we, did you become a docent to give tours? You just... That was, uh, a, that was always dangled, but I, I never took the, the carrot. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I, I know didn't you were it. intimately involved in interacting with our speakers and driving them in and transportation sure yeah and i tapped into jerry spinelli did you for uh, maniac mcgee um and his wife also um I very think. very uh, prolific writer and so um, i was able to get him to come to our school with you know the the, the book of the year only through you throwing your name at him <laughs> that, because he said, I don't do this anymore. He says, well, Greg Peterson you know, said I could call you. And so he came to our school, which was a highlight. Uh, it would never have happened without the connection to the Jackson Center. I did not know that he did Maniac McGee because he would not do that normally. So that's, that's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, he gave us the whole story, how that came about. You know. Of course, you know, he sold his house. <clears throat> He's no longer on the grounds permanently. But we do talk, I talked to him quite a bit. He's still in, interested in what we're doing. Uh, sure. So you had a chance through that being just around and being close to Carol Drake because she's the power of all things down there. I mean, there were other people, myself, Riley, but really it was Carol. Well, that's nice you, you acknowledge that. <laughs> well, we do. You would have, you would have said she, that anyway. Yeah. So as a result, you know, she used you a lot. Sure, and I enjoyed it. It was never anything I, I didn't enjoy or felt uh, obligated to. It was something I wanted to do. So, speaking about the authors, then you had Lois Lowry, who was, you know, another two two famous books: The Gift, 
or, or um, the giver, not the gift, the giver and uh, um, Number of the Stars. Really, you know, books that we all read, and so it was great to, to see her and get her story. We had yeah. Jane Yolen. Mm hmm. And, and you spent some time with Charles Shields. Charles Shields, now there's a story um, I draw upon all the time. Um, his intimacy. Uh, with Kill a Mockingbird, To Kill a Mockingbird, was uh, very insightful. And so he, what did you learn from him? I mean, Charles Shields, here he is, an unauthorized, unauthorized biographer of Harper Lee, mm -hmm. and he just does the research, gives it out, did he? Obviously, Harper Lee didn't appreciate that overly really much. No, I guess he, he, he kind of um, fine-tuned it that she was a very private person, and uh, she didn't want to see him. Um, he knew that there was another book. He, had, he, he, he saw that. He was telling us. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling you anything new. <laughs> but, um, and then he was going to D.C. for his book at the same time The Watchmen was coming out. And they, they wanted to, uh, his, his publisher wanted him to hawk it. And he said, remember what he said? No. I won't be a shill. <laughs> I'm not going to be a shill for that book. Because he didn't believe in it. Yeah. He didn't believe it was her book. Or you know, it was there was some legitimacy in the whole thing. He yeah. thought that the sister was had done some conniving and uh, held held that back, and all of a sudden Harper dies, and then she finds the book. So he he had all that uh, intrigue that he shared with us. Yeah. And you also had a chance to spend some time with Jonathan Ike. Ali. Ali. Yeah. 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 Um, I didn't really, you know, I, you know, I'm trying to think. <laughs> the book was it was certainly enlightening, uh, and traveling, you know, taking him uh, to Erie. Um, I'm not sure what what anything new came out about that. Maybe we just talked about civil rights and the uh, that whole debacle. Uh, him exp uh, um, entertaining his uh, his rights not to go into service. Yeah, but it's fascinating. And his wife is also a, she's a Chautauquan, right? You know, is that true? Is that, am, I, am I making that up? I don't know. Yeah. Never met her. Uh, he's working on a book on Malcolm or Martin uh, Luther King. Yeah, yeah. He's going we stay in touch because he wants yeah. to figure out some of the contacts we had. Yeah. Uh, and then along those same lines, Karen Korematsu was part of your world. Karen Korematsu, yes, no, there was a chatty girl, a woman, <laughs> yeah, uh, took her to the uh, Rochester airport, mm -hmm. which was a longer longer trip, and you know, I got more time to pick her brain, and um, really got some backstories about dad, and uh, how uh, they offered him, like, after this is all over, and they took the family fortune, uh, they gave him like 750 bucks, you know, this is the, what the, I don't know what you want to call it. Or, um, and he used that money to, to get out of Dodge. He left. He said, he didn't go back. He, yeah. he went to the Midwest. Uh, yeah. And then there's, there's a, there was, you know, a lot, very informative. And, and any, any questions I asked, I don't remember some of the questions I asked, but it was, that was a very intriguing time in our life, and she get just you know filled in a lot of color about what her family went through, her dad. You know. Well, they spent yeah. time in Detroit, uh, and so she actually got baptized in a church in Detroit, and mm -hmm. not too far from my daughter. Oh. Of course, you saved the day, Scott. You don't know that of that whole Korematsu 75th anniversary. The key was to have Karen say something at that CLE, and she had to get to Washington, and you got her to Rochester so she could take a flight to get into Dulles. Uh -huh. I mean, that was pivotal. Uh, and yeah. we had to assure her, that was you, that she would be on time to get the flight out of <laughs> Rochester, because what an unusual spot for yeah. us, but we had to spend a lot of time convincing her you'll be okay, because if yeah. 
she was going to get an award, big award, in Washington that night. Mm -hmm. And she had come from uh, New Hampshire, yeah. or Vermont, uh, a school of high repute, uh, and got an award there. She was. She had a she had a, she had an honorary doctorate. Right? Yeah, yeah, she, she she mentioned that to us. Yeah. So she's getting a doctorate. Comes here. Yeah. She promised us, and you know, with Denny Chin and that whole nine yards, and that was uh, so. Oh we, yeah. You were the hero. Didn't know that. <laughs> Lawrence Tribe. Wow. Talk about current events. You know, he's got. You, you probably read his uh, tweets. Just read it today. Yeah. But that was a uh, that was a uh, hairy uh, travel. Um, because of his stature, you wanted to get as much information as you could, as long as you could. And we had to get to Buffalo, and it was raining. Uh, it was wicked rain, and uh, so we had to be careful how we got there. And John Barrett uh, came out the car and said. This is precious cargo, Scott. You know, be careful. It's like I drive the same anyway. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm, hopefully, I'm not gonna get an accident. But I got. I got the message that this guy was special. Yep. And you spent some time with Barrett Prettyman too. Yep. Yep. A few times, I think. I think it might have been three. Three, three times. times. Yeah. And uh, you've done a great job of capturing him. Um, Stories after story. Um, he talked about his prep school days. He talked about Bobby Kennedy. The, uh, the great story about uh, the uh, Bay of Pigs uh, refugees coming back, and he got really stuck. He didn't like the idea, but he had to go down and meet with Castro and you. And you know, just pre preaching to the choir here. But that's just super stories and a delightful individual. Just a great guy. He was smooth, man. Yeah. He was smooth and had done everything. Yeah, and I also, when I was in, in Washington for something, uh, Helen and I went to see him at his apartment. Really? Yeah, so we went to his apartment. He had pictures of Bobby Kennedy in the hallway and, and he, you know, we just peeked our head in. But he wanted to go out, but something, um, I don't know if he, he didn't feel medically able to do this so we had we had lunch there at his uh, uh, facility in the dining room yeah it's terrific terrific memories of him Dahlia Lithwick only at Raleigh's house I think did we see her but I, I didn't transport her but uh, um, talk about the guru of the Supreme Court and they love her at uh, Chautauqua she can talk about anything she was a fill-in for something. Uh, they said, well, let's bring Dahlia Lithwick in for uh, a speaker. Yeah, great knowledge, you know, super stuff. Like you gave me one of her, I gotta give back to you today, uh, a DVD of uh, her talking about intellectual property or computers or, or something. It was, mm -hmm. you know, really, you were, you were entranced by that. You also uh, spent some time with uh, Gerhard Weinberg. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Uh, professor at Duke and probably other places, but uh, I guess the serendipity with this individual was he uh, found himself, what, at the, uh, the library at the University of Chicago? Mm -hmm. And here was this Trevor tro tre treasure trove of, of uh, Nazi uh, f stuff and he and I, it, it was he, he he spoke German or he could he, he could uh, so he he was the guy and he became a uh, the go-to guy because he uncovered it all and it was his job to sort it and sift it out but he also you know he was here for the book he wrote about World War II which is uh, pretty much the end of the war and, and the invasion of Japan and he paints a, a great picture kind of really the whole the whole story about uh, why it was necessary to drop the bomb. Sad story, but I guess we, it was necessary. But yeah, he was, he was, uh, he certainly was uh, a, a leader. He's, he, I think he's probably a very uh, uh, unknown uh, superstar in, in uh, 
historical realms of history. At least it was to me. <laughs> well, he, well, he's written a lot, but it's a uh, very World War II centric. Yeah. Uh, and so then that world, he's really a rock star, but it was just so much fun to have him here. And then we took him down to Erie, Pennsylvania uh, for an event with the Jefferson Educational mm -hmm. Society. Yeah. Uh, you became Carol's right hand person during the International Humanitarian Law Dialogues, which still continues. Uh, do you remember some of the prosecutors or uh, interesting folks that you may have had to shuttle back and forth? Sure, but we've got to we, we've got to give Rod uh, uh, a shout out here. I think he was first. You know, you know, Rod. You're right. He he, he, he got the two thirty. I, I might have got the six o'clock, but um, uh, one that I didn't realize the significance was Hans yep. Corral and his wife. Yep. What? How? How high up they were in that 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 world? So very delightful, you know, just salt of the earth people. That, that was they were very gracious people. Then I also picked up. Uh, Ben Sudu. Ah, Fatu Ben Sudu. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> Fatu. Fatu. Fatu Ben Suda, and and then um, from uh, University of St. Louis, the uh, she's um, Layla Sadat. Leia, Layla Sadat. Yeah, she was in the car. She was in the car. Oh. Then the other gal uh, who was who who had left. Uh, California. She went down to Georgia. She was part of their, their little clique. I mean, these these people were, were uh, just thick as thieves in the, in, in the back seat talking. But um, you know, that, that was that is impressive. You know, to have to to have her in the car and meet her, and again, just the nicest, down to earth person you want to meet. Uh, yeah, um, those are the ones that really stick out. Uh, that were. Oh, of course, David Crane. You know, he's he's a he's he's a regular and great guy. Great story is Jim Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so didn't have to transport Jim. <laughs> he was there. You know, we kind of take Jim for granted because he's here. But boy, he's now the chief prosecutor of the residual Sierra Leone court. I mean, yeah. he's at the same rank as Crane. Today. Ah, great. Right. And uh, we, again, we take it for granted because Jim's, Jim's Jim. Yeah. You, do you, uh, did your paths cross with Donahue? Yep, yes. A um, couple times. Uh, one was um, at the dinner that you had him speak and uh, I, or, or maybe he's just attending and that's where uh, um, <coughs> Uh, Russell, what's his? Mark Russell. Mark Russell. I think Mark Russell was the show, but uh, and then I think another time at the Jackson Center, uh, Donahue uh, spoke uh, accolades of Jackson, and uh, he could chapter and verse give you the uh, uh, the uh, fill, in, fill in the blanks here. Albert Speer. No, no, the <laughs> yeah, we did that too, but. Um, the religious, uh, oh, Barnett. the Barnetts, yes, oh, and that so was, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah, yeah you know, the uh, single constellation in our constitution, that whole, whole story. Yeah, and I, I also have a picture with him. Uh, uh, maybe this was somebody's house uh, with uh, Russell and Donahue, Phil Donahue, and then uh, uh, our friend from Chautauqua who had all the. Uh, Archives uh, when he was in D.C. He ended up giving it to Holocaust, but we were trying to uh, decipher the uh, what it was in German. Um, Paul, if I can give you his first name. Paul Wine. Yeah. So there's a picture of those three, and I'm in the background. So okay. I'm not sure where that was, but yeah. So and I have my I have a, I have a picture of the two of us, and I, I'm very proud of that. I share it whenever I can. Name dropper. Well, yeah, absolutely. Then you also I showed me a picture of you and Harold Burson. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stories I don't know if the, I heard him in the car or he he presented them uh, here in the public. But one that was really two 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 stories. One about uh, 
his alma mater, ask him to come back and uh, help out with uh, the removal of the uh, Confederate flag in their football stadium. Mm. Did you hear that story? Mm, Am no, I ma okay, all right. That. Well, um, but, but he's from Tennessee, so yeah. Yeah, and so the president came to him and said, I have a, a, a special assignment I'd like you to do. And he says, what is it? And he says, uh, I'd like you to, to remove, uh, I somehow I have to remove this, this flag because uh, our football team is suffering because Clemson and our rivals, all they do is when we have uh, uh, African American athlete is they, they show a clip of our stadium with the Confederate flag and these guys say I'm not going to that school. So he to, to even the playing field he needed to have the ability to the football team to draft uh, African Americans so they had to get rid of that, that Confederate flag and so he was brought in and uh, it was, you know he, he said wow this is gonna be tough but he he worked it he talked to student council and worked uh, Grassroots, and he was able to get get that taken care of. Wow. Yeah. Did I hear that? You talk about the Tylenol case. Yeah. You know, he was he was instrumental in, in how the Tylenol got got out of the uh, the uh, scare, and they recalled everything. They also mentioned uh, Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. That uh, Ronald Reagan, after he retired, he he uh, was going to, to Japan for a million dollars, and everybody knew it. Says so it was scandalous. How can this guy uh, get a million dollars? You know, this is, you know, everybody's rich. You know, he's presidents, and what he said, he said Ronald Reagan needed the money. He said he he was not a rich man. He didn't come out of the presidency uh, uh, with both pockets full. So he he, he really needed, but but he 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 uh, counseled him about well before I go over, you know, make some appointments, go see, go to some schools, go to some hospitals, make it a public relations tour, and he did, and it worked out very well. You know, he also mentioned, I gotta take this one, the lines were just yakking here. He, he, he said he went to Reagan's, um, Ronald Reagan, President Reagan's house, and they were talking, and he, Ronald Reagan says, uh, well, I think, uh, I think the wife has, uh, has uh, prepared some sandwiches for us for lunch. And he says, I knew she never made a sandwich. So she, had, she had to help make the uh, sandwiches, <laughs> but it was a nice gesture that he said, I think my wife has made the sandwiches. Uh, Steve Massa had experience with Harold Burson where he took, picked him up and he stopped at a diner in Westfield mm -hmm. to just have lunch or dinner at the time. And when they were ordering, S Steve ordered, the lady came up and said, would you like a Coke? Mm -hmm. And Steve goes, no, I prefer Pepsi. Oh, okay. Harold said, maybe you should reconsider. Because he was chairman of the board at, yeah. at that time. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. And Steve was mortified. Uh, yeah. He, Hold it, I'll, I'll take a Coke. I'll take a yeah, Coke. you don't know it, what they're endorsing. Yeah. Also brought uh, to the Jackson Center. Um, my brother Romek, uh, the the uh, yes, yes, the, I remember. The, 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 he was he was he was at Maple Grove, and he was going around to different schools and uh, selling his book. And um, terrible, I can't think of his name, but that was a great story of his brother and uh, meeting. J he met Javits and uh, helped out with the uh, persecute the prosecution of Nazis that killed his brother and. Uh, Terrorized that whole band of uh, resistance or yeah. people. Oh well, my God! Yeah, yeah. I saw his book the other day. I got this book the other day. Yeah. Um, you were there when the Chief Justice Roberts was there. I did. Yeah, got a great story there. Go ahead. <laughs> so I I was with uh, e. e. Barrett Prettyman Jr. and <clears throat> you know I was pretty just you know sitting in the same area. And the, the Justice Roberts came over and, and talked to Ebera Prettyman, and of course it was great for the two of them to get together. Then the uh, um, program began, and uh, I got up to go to the facilities. I was in the men's room, and in walks Chief Justice Roberts. Yeah, so I said, "Well, I would like to say something to him, but I, you know." 
little distasteful to go too far. I, I just mentioned uh, uh, how much Ebert Prettyman uh, held him in high esteem. And he said the same thing back, and then I got out of the bathroom. I said, I leave this guy alone, you know. And Secret Service was on the other side of the door. <laughs> I thought they should have come in, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. And then, we, then thanks to you and, uh, and your wife, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, photo ops, and I did get a picture with E. Barrett and uh, Chief Justice myself. Oh, great. You know. Yeah. Is it, you, one of the things that about the center was the opportunities that we all had that but for Jackson as the linchpin for all of that, yeah. we would have never met these people. Oh, true. Yeah. I mean, never. Open a lot of doors. Open yeah. all the doors, I guess. Open yeah. all the doors. Yeah. And did you ever go to uh, Washington, D.C.? Were you part of that or Nuremberg? Did you? <clears throat> no. Shows? No. No. Nope, never uh, got to the Supreme Court. No. Nope. Well, someday, someday. <laughs> Sharon Robinson, did you hang with her? I did. Yeah, took her uh, to the airport, and uh, she talked about the, her, the foundation and what th they were doing for education-wise, uh, and in different cities, uh, they had scholarships and they followed these these kids and really shepherded them. Uh, into success, um, mentioned she she had a small apartment, I think in in uh, New York, and uh, the way she described it, it sounded pretty uh, pretty Spartan. Uh, I thought for somebody of her stature, they, she should have a her own place. But uh, I think her sister or mother might might have no, not, I, yeah, her mother was still alive. Rachel's still yeah. alive. Yeah, and uh, again, a very humble woman. Um, but uh, what a treat to be in the presence of Jackie Robinson's daughter, family. Uh, great, uh, great connection to have her there. You in the Sports uh, Hall of Fame. You've had a variety of continuing legal education programs which were kind of crazy, Woodstock, scales of justice. Mm -hmm. You've had people talk about Barry Bonds, baseball. Do you remember sure. any of those crazy things? Uh, I do. Um, now you know the 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 family that own, own Woodstock. Yeah, Yasker. I mean, David Crane knew the story right off the bat. So how does he know this guy's name? You, you know, but uh, yeah, he was uh, he was a live wire when Sam. he when he spoke. It's whoa, he was uh, uh, very uh, entertaining and informative. Uh, his, his dad was a great guy and um, provided freebies and uh, the whole Woodstock phenomena, how it got to be uh, out of control and uh, they did the best they could and nobody got hurt and it was a, a love in and uh, I think thanks to his father and his family, they, they did a great job of making that happen. So that was uh, the backstory on Woodstock. I didn't go to Woodstock. I, I lived in Elmira, which I was a lot closer than you were to this, but I didn't. I, that was not my thing. But that was a great, uh, a great story. Uh, then the the Barry Bonds baseball boy, that was, that was a super story. The attorney. Paul Finkelman. Okay, Paul Finkelman. Yeah, that was. Uh, that's almost as good as uh, your story about the, the uh, ambidextrous pitcher. <laughs> Yeah, yep. yeah, but that was, uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it was a great story. It wasn't a happy ending, though. <laughs> it was like they had to, what they do? They split it or something? I mean, yeah, they, but they it, took it to an auction. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the way it should have been. But, you know, intellectual property is 101 on that one. You know, it's been f fascinating to see, and, and these people love it. For example, on that Woodstock one, you probably still have your tie-dye shirt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, I have a tie-dye shirt, yeah. Yeah, with the Resource Center. Convinced them. I, we convinced them to be a sponsor of that CLE, uh -huh. and they made tie-dye shirts for all of us. Uh-huh. So it said Robert H. Jackson, Woodstock. Yeah. And, sure. And then Sam Yasger, which was, he was phenomenal. And then we interviewed Corey Wells of Three Dog Night. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it just you can't make this stuff up. Sure. Yeah. My my that was one of my favorite bands, and here you actually have the lead sure. singer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and to, and to have all these f folks be willing to come here and essentially for no cost. Mm -hmm. And Sammy Asker subsequently came to Chautauqua. Oh yeah. He was a big biker. Okay. He and his girlfriend came to one of our events at Raleigh's. Uh, yeah. So next year we had a, uh, a Pam Carlin. Pam Carlin came. She spoke okay. as a Jackson okay. lecturer. Okay. And the next thing, you know, <laughs> in comes Sam. Yeah. Uh, and he just he was and he subsequently passed away. Yeah, uh, I think they're all gone now, right? The th the leap sleep. Well, he he passed away. Then the, the other guy, Corey Wells, did too. Yeah, they, yeah. I mean, about three, you're talking about the three dog night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, guys. Speaking of the motorcycles, there's the Ebear Prettyman story about the motorcycles, no, where he was. He had he had uh, Bobby Kennedy's. No, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> it's easy to mix the two. Uh, Marilyn Monroe's secretary. He had taken her on a trip in, in D.C. on his motorcycle. Really? Yeah. Well, when you see Barrett in the early days, mm -hmm. he was suave. Yeah. Was. Handsome guy, still was. Yeah, he? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, very, very, very handsome. Um, did you get caught up? Were you around with the Linda Brown, Katzenbach time period? Were you, uh, all, we had all those uh, law clerks and it's about 2004. No, I did see uh, the uh, the Brown sisters at Chautauqua and uh, and um, John Lewis. Yep. Yeah, with with uh, Joan Brown Campbell yep. at Chautauqua. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm not sure we're going to get him here, John Lewis. I, well, we. It's a long story, but not, I gotta file this thing. Not, not for lack of effort. <laughs> no, we tried, man. We tried. Cummins Engine was going to literally fly him in and fly him back. Wow. Because they had a long relationship with John Lewis, but okay. Uh, I got to their scheduler. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got deep into that, and they sure. just couldn't find a time. Mm. Anyways, it, it was a noble effort by by a lot of people. Um, you've seen a lot. Scott, do you, do you, having seen all these people, met the personalities, <clears throat> which probably more than anybody, uh, do you get a sense of their feelings towards Jackson? Well, you know, Phil Donahue was pretty easy, you know, that, that he, he's an open book on that one, you know, he's, okay. he's, uh, um, and I think just just the body of people that come here speaks for it. I mean, it's it's you're the rainmaker, but it's Jackson. That's this he's, he's the guy. Um, I mean, the significance of of the Korematsu case um, um, because of Jackson means a lot. Um, you know, there, there's vindication from Jackson and and. The issues that not necessarily always were in the favor of right, uh, but you know he 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 did make it right, and, uh, and then the fact that he's one of the most eloquent writers—that's another draw. And he's always being quoted by uh, Supreme Court nominees. You know, he, so he's 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 a shining light for us uh, and, and and made us what we are. Well, and you've made us be so warm and comfortable about, I'm not going to blow you up with a glory gun, Scott, but the reality is guys like you, but you foremost, maybe Rod Drake, uh, <laughs> but really, really went out of your way to be a good ambassador so that people like Carol would go back to you over and over and over again. Yeah. Clearly they were getting, Carol was getting the responses from a lot of the people you entertain that that Scott Sawyer is a special guy. Well, I enjoyed the company. They were, you know, I'm a hist I'm a history buff, and and these were great people. Um, and there wasn't a bad experience in the in the bunch, so it was uh, super. Um, still, uh, hope to do another ten years. We hope you do another ten years, also. Scott. Yeah. Well, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.